Greetings and salutations. How is everyone doing today? I'm actually sitting down for once. I haven't been sitting down in a long time. But you know what? It's the summertime here in the Northern Hemisphere, at least. It's time to take it a little bit easy. So here we are, sitting down. We're relaxed. We're lit. I don't know. We got a new lighting setup here. Things are gradually improving. We got some Angley's action coming up. That's right. Today we are going to be working on our Angley's project that we uh, introduced uh, um, a few weeks ago now. And we're going to follow up on the stuff that we did in the first stream. But if you haven't seen the first stream, it's not going to be a, too big of a problem because what we're going to be doing in this stream is following along and sort of retreading some of the, the territory we, retreading some of the ground we covered in the first stream, but more formally. So. If you haven't seen this at all before, if this is totally new to you, Anglese is basically a, um, it's a romance language as if um, Latin had gone through the sound changes of old English. So it's basically an English romance language. And uh, our, our guidance in this was the many, many actual loan words that come from Latin into Old English. So there are, surprisingly to, to many people, um, was certainly surprising to me at first, uh, there are lots of loans from Latin in Old English. Uh, we usually think of Latin influence on English as coming about during the Middle English period with French influence, or during the Renaissance or the early modern period with all of the introduction of educated Latin terms. But, but no, Latin influence has been with English from the very beginning, all the way back probably to the Proto-Germanic period. So we have a lot of loanwords from, from Latin and uh, into Old English. And so we have an idea of how Latin words would have been adapted by Old English speakers because in fact they were. So generalizing from this, we came up with uh, a sketch of some sound changes for, uh, for what the language we're calling Anglese, code name Anglese. Um, but our sound changes were very, uh, were very sort of impressionistic, rough. We didn't have uh, a lot of formality in how we did them last time. And so this time what we're going to do, this time what we're going to do is uh, 
is put the sound changes into Lexergy so that we know that we're we know that we got them right because the computer um, the computer tells us so. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna just take a look at the chat. Greetings, everyone. Welcome, welcome to the stream. Uh, Romanophonie. Uh, welcome, first time. Emily, yeah, the room is is shaping up. A uh, there's now some seating back there. Um, and the fern is back. I hadn't. I did an experiment with the fern, uh, which didn't work out so well. I thought beautiful weather outside. We're going to put it on the on the balcony, and uh, it'll do great. Turns out it was way too much sun for the fern, and it got a little singed on some of the leaves. So I had to bring it back in, and so now it's here instead of the ivy. Um, and yeah, such is life, but we've saved it and it only got a little singed, so you can barely even see it on the screen. Um, yeah, so, you know, we learn, <laughs> we live and learn. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, this is a, the chat always, I don't know why it does this. It just sort of comes in in big bursts. Um, it, the chat is in front of my face, Lucy, is that right? The chat in front of my face? It doesn't look in, like it's in front of my face. Maybe if I go over here, it is. But if I go if I go here, which is what I should be doing, then uh, then I'll stay out of its way. Um, yeah, uh, Wilhelm, the, the fact that cheese is a, a Latin loan word is wild. And yeah, Echo, the, the fern got a little singed. You can't really see it from here, um, but the the tips got a little uh, a little singed. L you know, luckily, beautiful sunshine, but too much of a good thing, right? So, with all of that sort of said, I suppose, um, why don't we jump in and actually get down to work? So, uh, I'll do a little intro for YouTube, um, just so that we can get everyone nice and uh, nice and introduced. Um, oh, but, but yeah, so the. To be fair, this is actually a palm. Uh, it's a parlor palm, uh, the which was apparently a very popular uh, houseplant in the Victorian period. Everyone liked to feel like they had a little, little palm tree in their um, in their house. And I should have known because the reputation of this plant in the Victorian period was, uh, I don't know if you've seen Victorian houses, but the interiors they didn't like a lot of light. And they had these great, you know, these great thick curtains and very dark inside because they didn't want light coming in and, and uh, presumably damaging the furniture. And as a result, you know, if you don't have much sunlight in your house, uh, you don't have a lot of options in terms of plants. But one option that you do have is the parlor palm, which can go in your parlor and it's a palm and hence the name. Um, but that should have, I should have sort of twigged to the fact that um, this is not a plant that likes a lot of sunlight, but hey, what do you know? Uh, right, so, intro for, for YouTube. YouTube, welcome back. We are back with some more Anglese, and we are going to be working on uh, taking all those lovely sound changes we made last time and putting them into Lexergy so that we actually are sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing and that we can generalize from the uh, test cases that we worked on last time. So, that's basically the gist of it. Let's jump in and let's get over to the side webcam view. There we go. All right, so I think we might need a more, we might need even more size. Zoom, zoom, zoom. How is that looking? Uh, on the left, I haven't done the right one. On the right, I have uh, I have a uh, distinctive feature chart, which we can use uh, because I think we're going to need to uh, play with our feature definitions. So voila, here is a, uh, a chart of different segmental uh, phonemes uh, or different, different segmental potential phonemes and uh, different segments and their feature specifications. Right, so. What are we dealing with? So this is the kind of rule that we built last time. We can go put out Lexergy on this side. The kind of rule we bought, we worked on last time was saying that a stressed ah is going to become ah, except in these circumstances. Um, you know, we, ha we had a very, uh, a light touch, shall we say. 
So now we have to take these and turn them into legitimate uh, rules that we can test whether they're working or not using Lexergy. I've got a little start for us in Lexergy here. Um, and again, tell me if this is visible or if the text is too small. Um, but I have a set of, um, I have the distinctive features that we used for uh, the specifications that we used to uh, work on Quack. So that's still here. We're probably going to need to add a few uh, segments because Old English and Pequak have different phonologies, but this will get us most of the way there. And I think what we're also going to need to do is get up uh, some Lexergy docs uh, because Lexergy is a very powerful, powerful piece of software, but uh, it uh, definitely has some learning curve. So with all of that said, let's get started. So we need to, uh, for those of you who haven't used Lexergy before, Lexergy is a, uh, a sound change, um, it's essentially a, a sound change applier. And one of many such programs uh, that have been made over the years, but this one is really good because it's extremely powerful and it lets you do a lot of the things that, that you really want to do um, as you're uh, doing diachronic linguistics. So. The basic gist of the rule, if you've seen uh, sound changes before, you've probably seen the format. Uh, Lexergy requires you to give each rule a name, uh, which is done on uh, on this, uh, on the first line, and then you enter, tab, and uh, write in the before, an arrow, the after, and then slash the environment. So if you've seen sound changes or, or even uh, phonological rules before, you've seen this notation. Gal Galactic Sand is, uh, Lexergy is Turing complete as well. It's a very impressive piece of software. Uh, and I am just going to double, triple check. Lucy, any, um, any technical adjustments we need to make before I go into doing non-introductory stuff? Super. Okay, so so let's get started. We are also, I saw this come up in the chat um, about rule ordering. Yeah, Elijah, what is the order of the sound changes? What indeed? So we have a sort of idea of what we want to go for um, because we have a list of loan words and how they came out in Old English, especially these first 17 loan words, which we've identified as being relatively early. Uh, so this is the era that we're trying to emulate. Um, we want to uh, we want our these Latin words to come out as these Old English words. So if we make our rules ordered in the right way, they will. And if uh, we order our rules incorrectly, then they won't. And so that's how we know. Super. All right. So I think this gives us a good. Um, a good first thing to do. So let's take our Latin and let's put it into Lexergy. And we are going to need to uh, get up our IPA keyboard because we need to represent this Latin more, um, more in an IPA friendly uh, fashion. So let's, so Ancora, is going to be, I'm going to put in all the sort of Latin allophonic rules and things like that. Uh, right, so we need primary stress. Where are you primary stress? Are you primary stress? You are. Dark mode doesn't always play nicely with things. Um, ancora. Uh, Jack asks, would voiceless obstruents be strongly aspirated in it uh, strongly aspirated in Anglese, contrary to typical Romance languages. Uh, so in Old Anglese, I think that is still, um, it's a question that we could go either way for. I think the emergence of aspiration in English is not, um, it's not something that there's total consensus on exactly when it happened. Um, and there are certain varieties of English that, that don't have the strong aspiration that you uh, associate it, that you associate with um, with you know standard um, varieties of English, uh, so I think we 
I would expect, you know, if we're developing Anglese to be parallel to English, then I would say, yes, we will have uh, eventually, at least, a uh, strong aspiration, but not necessarily in the old Anglese period, because it wasn't necessarily there in the old English period, at least as far as I understand that literature. Uh, so, ancora. And this we're going to need to come up to ancor. So let's see how we can do it. First of all, let's just run this through. Let's do a little smoke test, make sure everything works well. Smoke test, by the way, is a term, um, a term used uh, in, uh, I believe, in, in software, but also in, in other forms of engineering. You, the idea is that you run the system to make sure that you run smoke through the system to make sure there aren't any leaks in it. And you know, if smoke comes out somewhere, then that's a bit of a problem. Um, all right, so good. It comes out as ancora, perfect. At some point we have lost the stress, but we can uh, we can worry about that later. So let's make our first rule. So let's final v loss. All right, final vowel loss. So we want plus syllabic. And one of the nice things about LexuG is that it allows us to define rules uh, in terms of distinctive features. So plus syllabic, two, and then I believe, let me see if I can recall this correctly, I believe it's a dot uh, to indicate deletion. Let's go back to the LexuG uh, documents. And where is it? Deleting and inserting sounds. Oh no, it's not a dot, it's an asterisk. Some of these are not um, the easiest symbols to remember, but so final vowel loss. And normally uh, we would have a, a pound sign to be the um, word boundary. I believe Lexergy uses different uh, signs for different sides of the word. Ah, no, it doesn't. It just uses dollar sign instead of pound sign. So uh, for whatever reason, my uh, my lexergy uh, syntax is a bit rusty at the moment. All right. Ah, Chris Saucyon, thank you. Welcome. Um, all right. So, hey, there's our first sound change. Done. Ancora to ancor. And that's exactly what we want. Although we do want to uh, put in some of these old English, um, these old English allophonic rules. So, uh, first of all, this is an allophonic rule, but um, we want to back that a uh, to a. Uh. So, let's see if we have the requisite um, symbols. We do. These are already defined. So, although we can just make this very simple and put in a to a without going through the trouble of doing the feature definition. A to a everywhere. Encore. Encore. Good. And then let's do an old English allophonic rule. So um, rounding, prenasal rounding. Uh, so it's probably the case that. Um, both a uh, and both a uh and o oh rounded before nasals in uh, in old english so let's um, let's just get the rounded low back rounded vowel uh, which lives in o oh. i think of that more of as an a but either way and this is going to be before plus nasal and so Encore, encore. Excellent. All right. Yes, indeed. Okay, so we're making progress. That's our first test case done. Uh, next, next, I think we need to. Shall we? Shall we worry about stress? I think I'm. I'm a bit disturbed by the fact that we've lost stress here. So, uh, stress in Old English is going to be. Um, robustly initial, robustly word initial, except in certain cases of, 
of prefixed verbs. So we can probably just go with a simple stress rule. Uh, let's see, how are we going to add stress? It has been a long time, but hopefully this is also helpful. Uh, as I look back through the documentation, maybe it'll um, help those of you who are, haven't used Lexergy before uh, as well and can be almost like a bit of a, a bit of a tutorial. So uh, we need to find stress. Here we go. Stress. So show me where we are talking about stress, please. Stress assignment. Where is the stress assignment? All right, so we had some good um, stress assignment examples. This is a, a pretty simple one. So basically what we can, we can do is just say um, stress plus syllabic, plus stress, if, now how do we define stress? Oh, stress is a syllable, um, a syllable feature. So I think what we can do is, yeah, ship, adding stress to things is so annoying. Because um, this is, this is a, a syllabic feature. I think we can do something like this. I could be wrong. Let's see. No, that didn't work. Um, okay, so this is also part of the joy of doing Lexergy uh, live is that we get to debug things. And if, if it takes us too long, we'll just ignore it and move on. Um, assign stress. Maybe I can't Maybe I actually have to put something in the left-hand side. So let's do plus syllabic. Ah, there we go. Okay. So that's given us our stress back. Perfect. And now this is looking very nice. Encore. Now we can go do campo to comp. So this is going to be our our input, um, you know, I can put in the Latin nasalization on that OO, perhaps that might help. Uh, but it's just going to be uh, taken, taken away by this uh, final vowel loss rule. So here we go, campu to comp. Perfect. So we've got two test cases down. And what I like about this is we have a known input the Latin, we have a known output, the old English uh, loan words, and we have a set of test cases. So all we have to do is make the rules work such that the test cases all pass. Um, and you know, this is, this does feel a lot like, um, a lot like writing software in a way. We have our test cases, we need to make, make sure they all pass. And how do we do that? We write code. So, you know, if, if, uh, if you are, um, if you are a, a software engineer, developer, and you are curious about uh, getting into getting into linguistics, this is a fun way to do it. Uh, and if the other way applies to you, if you are a, a conlanger or a, a linguist and you are interested in software, well, there you go. There's a good path. Now let's keep going. So candela, Candela. Ah, yes. It seems, that, it seems I'm not the only one who thinks so. Um, that this is somewhat reminiscent of, uh, of writing software. Candela. We need our long mark, our proper IPA long mark. There we go. And delightfully, here it is. Candela. And what's going to happen here? What's our prediction? Well, uh, this should assign stress to the first syllable. It should uh, back this A and round it, so we get condel. Uh, but we're not going to shorten this vowel, which we will need to do. Uh, so that'll be something else for us to do. And then finally, we will delete this A. So we will come out with something like condel. Um, so we'll need one more rule to fix this. Let's test our hypothesis. 
Yes. Uh, ah, wait. Indeed, indeed, something else has happened. The, uh, the stress has uh, maintained itself. Interesting, 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 interesting. Why is this? Ah, it's perhaps because I got the wrong stress symbol. So then let's try it again. And let's, uh, let's remove. Okay, so here's what's happened. When I was writing Ankora, I got the wrong, technically it looked like the stress symbol, it wasn't the stress symbol. And so that's why um, Lexergy didn't recognize it. Now when I've added it, it seems that my stress assignment rule does nothing. So let's try and debug that. Uh, so let's do plus syllabic minus stress. And let's just make a, a two-part rule. So we first of all delete all stress and then reassign it. Let's see if this does what we want. And indeed it does not. Is it because our diacritic is wrong here? Perhaps. Hmm. All right, so it seems that something has gone terribly wrong in this stress case. So I'm going to uh, give up and uh, try and do something else because I don't know why that's not working. And if anyone in the chat can tell or give me hints, this is part of the joy of doing this together is that, uh, you know, if it were just me, I'd be staying up late at night, you know, trying to figure this out tearing my hair out, but, but we can actually, uh, we can help each other. So if anyone has any ideas about uh, why this stress rule might not be working, uh, we have a, um, we have a, sil a syllable feature, stress. Um, we have a diacritic before the stress and, um, and okay, I think we have the answer. Jack, uh, Jack Ren saying the stress is bound to syllables then uh, Lexergy expects us to define a uh, syllabification rule, which we haven't done. So let's do that next. And what is the syntax for the syllabification rules in Lexergy? Syllables, 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 syllables. Where are our syllables? Perhaps down here, ah, yes, syllables. So we can just make the syllables explicit for now. Um, that could be good, but it would be nice if we could actually work on a pattern because Latin syllables are relatively, um, relatively easy to understand. So we have the syllable structure is going to be, we're going to have a, syl a syllable nucleus. We're going to have some kind of onset. Uh, so an optional, let's call this a, a, an optional, yeah, a non-syllabic uh, here and a non-syllabic in the coda. And I think this is our way to make them optional. Let me remind, yes, so a question mark after will make it optional. So um, thank you, Jack. That was a really good tip. I think that's what's going to, um, what's going to help us out here. So the, this syllable structure is not going to be sufficient for Latin. Um, we are going to need uh, to put S in here, potentially, and S in here, potentially. Um, and then we're going to need to have a, a, what's it called? A, um, we're going to have our sonorants here. So we're going to have, so minus syllabic plus sonorant, um, minus syllabic minus sonorant. So S followed by an obstruent followed by a sonorant followed by 
a vowel followed by a sonorant followed by an obstruent, opt optionally followed by S. All right, so let's see if this works. Unfortunately, it's hard to see because it doesn't even tell, tell us if it's run. Hmm. All right. Well, this, you know, I'm not sure how amusing this uh, debugging is. Let's just try and change something so it gives us a different output. Ah, okay. No syllable pattern can start with ah. Interesting. So we must have, uh, we must have defined something incorrectly somewhere. I don't understand why, because a syllable should be able to start with ah. It's, uh, it's syllabic after all. And this is the only mandatory thing in the syllable. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Well, syllabic sonorant. Not sure what I've done wrong here. Does it not like us putting S literally in here? Maybe I can delete those and we can see what it does. Yes, no, maybe, I'm not sure. It's it really doesn't like that candela. No syllable pattern can start with ah. Oh, I really beg to differ, Lexergy. This is quite, I uh, don't understand why I wouldn't, uh, why I wouldn't appreciate that. We have it defined and everything. But uh, okay, well, perhaps we'll, um, perhaps we'll make these, uh, wish we had a way of triggering comments here. <laughs> I have to do it all manually. Let's just ignore this stress stuff for now because who has the time, right? Candela. It's still, it really doesn't like that. Uh, so we're going to uh, we're going to perhaps do syllables explicitly then here, and let's syllables explicit. Still not interested. There we go. Okay, that's the that's the syntax. All right, friends. We at least have something working now. Let's see if we can get our stress. Uh, our stress back. All right. So yeah, the fact that our stress is syllabic is going to be something of a problem. Um, a way to see, I see incoherent productions. We don't have a symbol for back rounded a ah it's the rounded one we don't have that makes sense all right all right so let's let's do it to see this is the genius of this chat you're fantastic Unfortunately, the window for Lexergy doesn't expand more. It's a bit annoying. and I don't want to have to go and mess around with it. So let's see. That looks better. Let's then take off the explicit syllables and let's see if we can rescue our previous syllabic syllabification rule. Um, yeah. Thank you to Incohere Productions on this one. Fantastic, fantastic debugging. Yeah, that works. Perfect, 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 perfect. And then what we need is to just delete these. Still doesn't like, uh, still doesn't really like the, uh, the stress diacritic here. Uh, strange, strange, strange. It 
doesn't like it. Maybe, what if we got rid of the long vowel? Would that fix it? No. Well, that's a bit of a mystery. Um, and again, chat, if you are, uh, if inspiration strikes you. Otherwise, I will go back to the explicit syllabification. All right, so back to our explicit syllabification, which does very nicely, except we still can't seem to get the stress. Um, say initial stress rule, which is going to be that um, just remove stress, oops, we need the colon, remove stress, and then we can add we can add it back in, perhaps. Technically what I want to do is just have a rule like this. that doesn't seem to work. So typically you don't want to have the, the same thing in the, the plus in the, the plus version of the feature in the first part of the rule, the, the minus in the second, because what you're doing is saying everything should be minus. So you shouldn't need to say the pluses, exp the pluses are going to minus because the minuses are already minus and well, maybe I'm being a bit uh, opaque, but there's no real difference between saying plus stress goes to minus stress. Like ev stressed things become unstressed. You can just say everything becomes unstressed and that has the same effect. But anyway, yes. And so then we lose the stress and then maybe we gain the stress in the first syllable of the word. Will this work? <gasps> Voila, it worked. It worked. Okay, so that took ridiculously long. <laughs> Thank you for, for bearing with me through that. And um, let's, uh, let's continue. Unfortunately, the chat is on some sort of a strange delay. So I think, um, I think we have dealt with the, the stress issue for now, but I will return to these questions if, uh, or these uh, bits of advice if, if we end up needing them. Um, what's next? We need to shorten that, uh, that vowel. So let's um, shorten unstressed vowels. So this is going to be something like plus syllabic, plus long to minus long. Uh, when you are not stressed. And for some reason, it it seems to work like this. Great. Great, okay. So, we have now fixed it, but uh-oh, we have our stray, uh, our stray syllabification marks. So let's now, now that we've got our, our ah uh, issue sorted out, let's see if we can return to to syllabification by rule, and we can, and it's glorious. It's glorious. Okay, so we don't need explicit syllables anymore, hopefully. Actually, let's. here's the real test. Yeah, uh, no, we still need it in the input for some reason, but we can at least not have, we can at least uh, readjust them automatically. Yeah, really, um, MSCR, wait, M, Sorry, I need to zoom in. MSCLRHD uh, is correct. It's not recognizing the syllable boundary at the stress indicator. Um, although why a st why stress would have to be part of a syllable rule just doesn't make sense to me. Very strange, very, very strange. But this works for now. So we have our first three words working. Let's keep going. So here we have castra. And this is one that we uh, that we looked at last time. 
and we see a split. We have ka, ka, ka in the input, but ka, ka, cha in the, or ka, ka, cha in the output. And the reason is because of the nasals. So this gives us a good, um, a good test. Now, if we look at uh, the Latin syllabification, I believe we should syllabify with S in the coda of the first syllable based on um, based on the uh, uh, the accentuation patterns, the stress pat patterns in Latin, and things like magister rather than magister, which is something that a lot of people are. Um, well, this is sort of an aside, but there are words in Latin where, uh, depending on where you syllabify that S, the stress would change. So. Some people say mag magister and some people say magister. Uh, but uh, from all I understand uh, about the, uh, the Latin stress system, uh, S does count as part of the coda. So it will attract stress. Um, why does it count as part of the coda when you can have S STR, uh, say, like this STR is not a, a difficult, uh, it's not a band combination at the start of a word. So, um, strix, um, owl, uh, is not, is a illicit word in Latin, but what you'll find is in poetry, when a word like that comes after a, a word that ends in a vowel, that S counts as heavy for that syllable before. So it's like, it's sort of in, sort of out. If what I'm saying sounds like gibberish to you, just ignore it. We can talk about it another time. All this to say, I'm going to solidify the S with the ka. So let's see what we get here. Burn. Error. All right, why error? Because now we've created an illegitimate syllable. But actually, Old English has a, a repair strategy for this, which is to, in, to append this as an E. So what we need to do is, in this final vowel loss, before we, um, before we finish with it, is if we have a newly... Um, if we have lost the final vowel and we've created an illegitimate sequence, we need to repair that with a parenthesis. So, uh, what's that look like? That looks like we have a sonorant we have a sonorant following a um, an obstruent at the end of a word. So hopefully this will repair caster. There, caster. So now that we've got caster, we just need to uh, make sure that the vowel and the initial uh, part of the word does the same thing or the correct thing. <laughs> Maj needs more smoke. Indeed. More smoke for the smoke machine. All right. Castra. So, what, how are we going to fix this? Well, we need to not back the A when it's before... Um, we need to not back the A uh, when it's not before a nasal. Wait, that's a lot of negation. Let's just write it out. So, a will go to a before a nasal, then actually let's call this what it is, Anglophrygian brightening, a to a everywhere. And then what we can probably do is, now I don't remember exactly the sequence of sound changes hypothesized in um, pre-Old English that led to this, but this will get us our result, I believe. So we just do the Anglo-Frisian brightening, which is a to a. Um, and then we back it to a before nasal. Although I think actually that really what happened was um, it may have been the opposite order, but it doesn't matter. We just need something that works. So here's caster. Um, if anyone knows the uh, 
if anyone knows um is familiar with the the sound changes like the pre-old english sound changes or has um has a, a reference up um obviously it's not something i can show <laughs> um uh, a pdf of that on the screen so um if anyone has that let me know and i can tweak the the ordering but this works at least and then what we need to do is we need to palatalize palatalization so k to ch k to ch and uh, do we have the do we have the ligature in the symbol set uh we don't even have ch ah uh -huh, this is going to be potentially a problem we need to add it so let's get oops, let's get a uh, ch in and and j for that matter there we go let's get these into lexergy and uh, i don't remember what this uh, feature system uses to differentiate between them so let's find out uh, no that's david peterson's one this is the lsa one uh, do we have i forget which system has that distinction no i think david peterson's does all right let's see I uh, know it doesn't. It does not. So we're going to have to uh, we're going to have to improvise. All right. So this is a kind of a niche thing, but so continental sonar strident. It should be delayed release because it's an affricate. It should be strident because it's shh. Uh, apologies <laughs> to my microphone for that. It should be minus nasal. It should be minus lateral. Okay, we need to go to the place features. It should be coronal. Um, now, should it be anterior and distributed? Now I'm going to have to. Uh, I'm going to have to consult my notes because it has been a long time since I have dug into the details of the different coronals. Although if anyone in the uh, chat uh, can come up with a, a good uh, answer, please do let me know. So let's go back. So we need to find the minor place, the minor features of our, uh, the minor place features for coronals. So anterior articulation at alveolar ridge or forward distributed articulation with tongue blade. Now I have a bit of a strange um, realization of this uh, English phoneme, so I've learned long ago not to trust my own um, my own intuition about what ch and sh are supposed to be, because myself I make them more like a retroflex sh sh. I you can't see, but it's tongue tip um, and uh, and bending slightly backwards rather than sh. Sh, which I think is the canonical sh. The, so this would be anterior and sh distributed, I think. Aris Random, welcome. Glad you can make it to a stream. Okay, so always good to see when people can make it. You've been hanging around for a while, can make it to a stream. Minus anterior plus distributed. Um, Minus anterior for sh for for the long s character. Um, sh, sh. It feels like it feels like it's making contact before, but I I'll take your word for it because I really don't know what's going on in there, uh, in other people's mouths. <laughs> I just know what mine's doing. Um, so uh, minus anterior plus distributed. Okay. Oh. And forgive me if I'm mispronouncing your name, but Fuang Penka, welcome. 
Uh, it's 4 a.m. there. Respect. <laughs> Respect. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, and let's get... So we said minus interior plus distributor, which we already have. So what's the difference then between this ch and this ch? This ch and this ch in terms of features. I, uh, I do not know. I'm gonna just double check to see if any, if, uh, so these alveopalatal versus, versus the post alveolar. What feature distinguishes between the alveopalatal and the post alveolar? I do not know. Maybe Google knows. Oops. Oops. Chrysostom, thank you. Oh, it's it's uh, it's Slovenian pinza. Wonderful. All right, let's see what Stock Exchange has for us. It's minus. Okay, so it's high. So we can then. minus high and that should do it let's just see if it compiles so to speak oh yeah i forgot to put this in cut the ch before and how are we doing front vowels? Do we have a, they're just minus back, are they? I believe they're just minus back. Voila, chaster, we did it, we did it. All right, I'm gonna just put in a cut here. Um, so for our YouTube friends, thank you so much for joining us. We'll be right back to finish, uh, finish off our work for the day. Um, but for you on YouTube, that'll be uh, the next video. So we will see you then. Till then. Okay, uh, chat, I'm just going to beat eye because I need to uh, splash some water on my face because it's actually kind of warm here. Uh, as I said, beat eye. <laughs>
great. Thank you to the band. Ah, oh, my friends, I have to show you something. I have to show you something. So um, it was uh, recently my birthday and I got the most amazing present from my sister. And I have to show you because I think you of all people will appreciate it. Check it out. I don't know. Let's make sure the, the uh, focus gets it. There we go. <laughs> it's B-Riverse, B-Riverse stickers. The B-Riverse. And check it out. We have other ones too. <laughs> nice calm. And, and it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be complete without a schwa. <laughs> Isn't this amazing? Oh. Uh, my sister's so good to me. <laughs> Katie, if you're watching, thank you. <laughs> anyway, that made my day. Um, so we'll be littering. We'll be littering, uh, lit littering various things with these stickers. Um, I don't know. We'll have to see. I have to find some, some way to display them up behind me. So anyway, that's just uh, a fun thing that happened. Uh, it was a good birthday. It was a good birthday. We had uh, a very nice, um, very nice day for it too. It was a uh, beautiful, beautiful weather. Got to hang out with the fam. So always, always, always a pleasure. Anyway, um, we have some work to do. So why don't we jump back in and I'll, I'll welcome you two back and then we can uh, start messing about with, uh, with Lexigy. All right, YouTube, welcome back. We are in the middle of working on our old Anglies sound changes from Latin in Lexergy. So yeah, I, I don't see any reason why we shouldn't just get right on it. Here we go over to the side webcam with me. Here's where we were. Here's where we left off last time. And we've got four test cases passing. Ancora to Ancor, Kampung to comp, candela to condel, and castra to chaster. Perfect. What's next? Disco. Disco is going to have to become dish. Dish. So uh, let's see what happens with no um no messing about oh we have an issue we have an issue um this actually should not fail so we need to adjust our syllable um our syllable uh definition um so we need to put in a potential s here and we need, honestly, we need to put in S's all over the place, which we took out because while we were debugging, and we forgot to put them back in. <laughs> we, <laughs> yeah, thanks, Colin. I forget to put the, forgot to put them back in. Okay, so then we get disk, but that's not what we want. We want, um, we want dish. So this is going to be part of our palatalization rule. Uh, so this is going to be something that happens first because we don't want we don't want it to turn into like we don't want ski to become chi. We want it just to become she. So let's make sure that we just get all SKs to sh, and they're going to be uh, geminated um, because they were geminated intervocalically, uh, but we'll probably degeminate them word finally and yes so then we need to just make sure that um, this is just a kind of a housekeeping rule that uh, geminates are simplified word finally we're gonna have to repeat this over and over again as they come up uh, but 
where would that actually end up living? Let's go back to the Lexergy rule because I don't remember how they handled geminates. Um, degemination. Okay. Oh, yeah. These are always really weird. So, degemination. I'm just going to copy this. I've always found these like these uh, dollar sign one rules in Lexergy very confusing to use. But this is going to be like this. There we go. Dish. And voila, we're done. And so this rule, which degeminates, we're going to use in multiple uh, instances. We're going to need it when it comes to mille as well. Got to hydrate. Got to stretch. You've known that since you were young. All right. Draco. What are we going to do with Draco? And this is an interesting this is an interesting case. I probably mentioned this last time, I think I did, where we're not taking, as we conventionally do, we're not taking the Latin from the accusative, we're taking it from the nominative. And it's probably because this O ending was very transparently equivalent to the Old English A ending, or the Germanic weak noun conjugation. Uh, and indeed, these are historically related to one another. So these are things that in Latin end in O in the nominative and have this own stem like draconis. Um, the abstract nouns that end in io in Latin like um, administratio, religio, all of these, uh, they are of this class as well. And uh, the weak nouns in Germanic are like this too. They have an N uh, that shows up in the oblique cases. So draca, se draca the dragon, but thone dracon, the dragon, but accusative. Uh, so let's see what to do about it. Dra -co. So this gives us drac, and this is not what we want. So we're going to have to edit one of our rules. What rule are we going to edit? Well, we've lost the vowel that we shouldn't have lost. So we need to exempt long vowels from this uh, from this loss. But wait a second, this won't fix it. I'll run it so that we can prove it, but this won't fix it because we were shortening the unstressed vowels beforehand, which we're going to need to change the order of. So let's watch how this doesn't work. Right, because what we've done is we've fed, we're feeding, so we're feeding the final vowel loss rule with the shortened unstressed vowel rule. Because the output of the short and unstressed vowel rule, we take a long vowel that's unstressed and shorten it. Then we take a final vowel that's short and delete it. So you can see the output of one feeds the, the input of the next. It's like you're, you're taking a, a word and just putting it through this conveyor uh, belt. Um, ah, Diella, thank you. And so what we need to do is just change the order. So now we have Draco, uh, and that works nicely. Dayala, yeah, <laughs> you and me both, seriously. Lexergy is not a, um, it's not a toy. We'll put it that way. It's not a toy. So here we have Draco. Uh, so two things to fix. One is the, we need to uh, neutralize this final vowel. And then we need to adjust the front vowel here because we shouldn't have draca, we should have draca. And what happens is that a gets pulled back when a uh, when there's a back vowel in the next syllable in Old English. So that's what's going on there. So we need to do two things. One, we need to have a neutralization rule in the uh, for unstressed vowels. For yeah, presumably. Well, at least final vowels. So, um, now the thing is, I'm not totally sure that we want to do this as a phonological rule. 
because I think there was probably a morphological awareness that the the Latin o onis ending is equivalent to the Germanic a an ending. But let's do it phonologically just for now, because that's all we can do in lexity. Um, so final vowel neutralization. This is going to be o um, to a when unstressed and final. We maybe we don't need it to be final. Maybe we just need it to be unstressed. But let's uh, let's be conservative with our rule for for now. Oh. Oh, what's happened? We are experiencing the magic of a feeding order again. How? Well, the final vowel neutralization, O to A. So we have fed, with the output of this rule, A, we have fed the Anglo-Frisian brightening rule to A, which feeds the palatalization rule. So we have this feeding order, which we don't want. Uh, so we need to put this after the anglo fusion brightening rule. Dracha. And we need to... Uh, we, what do we need to do here? We need to actually, I think, go to the back A. Uh. So, Dracha. Now we can uh, do the A uh backing as well when we have a back vowel in the next syllable. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so then, ah, we have to do one of these auto-segmental style rules, um, which Lexergy lets us do by just ignoring certain intervening segments. Um, I don't remember what they call this. Let me just look. Do, 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 do. Mm. Rule filters, I think is what they call it. Yeah, so we only care about vowels. Unfortunately, we don't have this um, this vowel here, so we have the feature. So let's, sorry, I'm gonna have to process this with my brain a bit here first. So I think what we need to do is have a, another, have another we want add to become ah. Four plus back, and we want it only to care about vowel. We want it only to care about vowels, but we don't have any feature called vowel, so can we say only for plus syllabic? Yes, we can. Draka, done. Yes, we have it. Uh, Chrysostom, yes, there is. There are cases um, like uh, Leo in Latin becoming Leo in Old English, but this actually will not fall. So, it, well, as it's written now, it will fall victim to this rule. But what we have to do is take that disyllabic Leo and turn it into the monosyllabic Leo. And then once we have it as a monosyllable, it won't uh, it won't become lea or anything like that. I think that's the only case where it, where it ends up as an Old English monosyllable. Or or we do have it as lea, and then we just have a vowel coalescence rule take care of the turning a a into eo just like we have in um, verbs like seon or yeseon um, where you have 
you have um, you know endings like uh, yeah well but let's not worry let's not get too much into the details of that because I think I might be talking about things <laughs> that only I am um, that only I am thinking about uh, but there are examples like fail um, money so f e o h in in old English and when you get f e o h e s the H drops off, and then this E lengthens the preceding diphthong. So it goes feos. Um, yeah, so that is roughly what we're thinking of here. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, Wade, is the goal that the code turned the Latin into modern English or something similar? Yes, yeah, something similar. So far, we're wanting to replicate the changes that turned Latin words into their Old English uh, loanword equivalents. Um, and then we're going to use that as a basis to, to evolve a, 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 an English Romance language. So, Draco, Draco. Uh, then next, Gigante. So we have to take this, turn it into IBA, add our syllable breaks and our stress mark and see what we get. So we get gigant. <laughs> Lovely. Gigant. Which is very close to what we actually want. We want gigant. So we just need to change our palatalization rule to add the voiced version. And this should do it. Gigant. Perfect. Done. See? it's th The wheels are in motion. Things are working. Uh, mille, to mile, or mille in Old English. Uh, mi, slightly annoying to have to write in the syllabification and the stress, but who's worried? Ah, okay, now we see. This is something I alluded to earlier. We need to degeminate, um, we need to get this degemination rule that we have as a cleanup for palatalization after um, after the final vowel loss as well. And I think there might be some provision in Lexergy always to be running these kinds of rules. Yeah, so it's a cleanup rule. So let's um, let's put that in. So we're going to call it degemination, and this is going to act as a cleanup rule. And then we don't need to have it here. And voila, meal, meal. All right, onwards and upwards. Urkeu. So, yes, Jack. Once again, you know, Jack, your lexergy knowledge is very impressive, I must say. Thank you. Unfortunately, the chat delivers things just a little bit too late sometimes, but it's much appreciated. Uh, and then let's put in ur ke u. Uh, so this is going to be interesting. This is going to be interesting because we're going to need to palatalize, going to need to uh, turn this ur ke u into ur q so that it will be deleted by the final vowel deletion rule. And uh, let's see what uh, what happens without any uh, without anything else, yeah, we get urche, which is not what we want. The yala, yes, this is why um, this is why a lot of words in other Germanic languages that have ga have ya instead of uh, instead in Old English because of this because of this rule. Right. Okay. So what are we going to do? We need to have a um, we need to. This is going to be a slightly tricky rule, I think. We need to take um, 
So glide formation is the rule. This is a, a romance thing. Um, we get E and I become yod before a vowel if they're not stressed. Stress. I think that should work. Okay, that sort of didn't work. Ah, uh, no. That sort of didn't work. Urcus. So what we're going to need, we're going to take this A, turn it into a glide, and then just delete it along with the vowel. Um, so, but let's... So what this is going to do is just... Ah, there we go. Okay, urk. So that gets us almost there. So what, so what did we ju just do here? We took situations where E and I are in hiatus with another vowel, like in urkeus, urkeum, here. And what happens in, in late spoken Latin is that these hiatus vowels turn into glides. So instead of urkeu, we have urkiu. And then we just lose that final vowel and the glide that was hanging around there just deletes. So it doesn't end up palatalizing because you have orc and not orch. Um, indeed. So, orc, and, but we need one more thing. What is that thing? We need to turn short u into o in this case. Um, and I forget exactly what we'd said we were doing about that. Let's look. Yeah, we're going to turn short U into O, just across the board, which is fine. That's definitely doable. Uh, as for where that's going to happen, I'll put it, you know, around where we're messing with the other vowels. So, um, uh, short U. Hmm, what do we, yeah, it's not exactly the romance vowel system, the Western Romance vowel system, short U, U, O, neutralization, we'll call it. I don't have a snappy name for it. Like this. Orc, good. But what happens if we have a long U? So let's just say, for example, if muru wall, that will stay. Good. Okay, that's all I wanted to check. Um, the yala. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is really interesting. Um, the corresponding reflex of the breathy voice palatal in English should be g but it's yeah in some cases, yeah. And that's because of this palatalization. So another good example of this is yard, the word yard, um, yard in Old English. Um, this is the same root that gives us uh, garden, um, which, comes, uh, which comes through another, uh, through another path into English. Uh, it's garth in Old Norse. Um, Hortus in Latin, so the H is going to be cognate with the G uh, in Germanic, the H in Latin. Yeah, lots of interesting stuff there. Um, right, what was that? Oh, sorry, I got uh, lost in etymological, uh, etymological fun. All right, and then our next thing is just orcus, orcum, which is going to... Um, merge with urkeu. Yeah, orc orc. And look at this. We're getting quite close, quite quite close to passing all of our tests. 
scrivere. So we are going to um, ignore the morphology here. So in Old English, it comes with, with the Old English infinitive ending, this on. Uh, we're going to keep the romance ending. So we don't have to pass the test all the way. Uh, but we do want to keep this as much as we can. So scri be re. And let's make sure we get that correct. So what do we have so far? Oh, not allowed, not allowed. Why? Ah, it's because I made the wrong symbol. There we go. Schrieber, Schrieber, which is already quite close. What do we need to do? We need to take this B and turn it into a, uh, a V, which is going to be written in Old English with F. Um, yeah, tramvai is, yeah, you're correct. Um, there are some interesting Slavic cognates of, of that word. It's also the, the same root that you see in uh, cities named something Grad, um, which I don't know, I'm not a, a Slavicist, but I believe that comes from the old church Slavonic, um, the Grad versus the like Gorot or Horot, um, more East Slavic um, derivation, but I could be wrong about that. Um, <laughs> Job's done. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Okay, so let's figure out how to do this. So we need B to turn into V. Not a surprise if uh, you've seen other Romance languages. Um, and where do we have our... Yes, so we're going to have B going to V. Um, quite, quite simply in an intervocalic uh, situation. So we can just stick this towards the bottom. Um, it's not really beticism. Let's just call it B-lenition. Um, so B to V. And then let's say plus syllabic on one side and plus uh, sonorant on the other. And and so our, our infinitive for this verb in Old Anglese is going to be er. Uh, right, then let's keep going. Singnu. So C, and then we want a velar nasal. Singnu. Probably a velar nasal there in Latin. Oops, that's not the right one. Singnu. Um, okay, so this is not going to work as it is. Um, let's take this velar nasal and this is going to be, I'm wondering if we should actually just notate this as a G um, because it may have been heard by old English speakers as a G and it seems to be treated like other G's. Although I think the evidence is pretty good that it wasn't uh, a stop in Latin. Um, so this is going to be another part of this palatalization um, situation. So we're going to put it after a back vowel and before a consonant. So this is going to look like C N. C N. Okay, so we don't necessarily want it to be C N. Uh, we want it to be Sein. Um so although you do have actually you do see Sein as well in Old English. But I think we don't want that. So we need to change our cleanup rule here. So instead of a hmm, I think maybe we can actually do this just by just by making 
final vowel loss happened later. Oh, but this is this could have some some bad consequences. Shall we see what happens? So this is more or less what we want. Scene. So let's let's make a, a note as to where that was. So final vowel loss was here. And we're going to put it here now. And we are going to then change the stress, the syllable rule ever so slightly. Because maybe it doesn't have to be, oh no, these are minus syllabic. Ah, well, why does it have to be minus syllabic? Why can't it just be? plus sonorant to let these glides in. That's the way. Oh no, that won't work because N is sonorant too. So we need a, another layer here. Sorry, I'm talking to myself. Well, the whole thing is, I guess, talking to myself, but um, we want minus syllabic, minus consonantal. Okay, now we've messed something up. I've messed something up. Oh yeah, it has to be optional. Forgot about that. Okay, so have we have I messed anything else up by changing this? Ankor still looks right, comp still looks right, condel, chaster, dish, dra, we've lost we've lost our uh, our draco. Yeah, so we're going to have to play with this. We need the shortened unstressed vowel to happen after final vowel loss. Am I am I going down a bad path here, friends? Draco, and then we need the final vowel neutralization and the ah uh, backing to come after. So final vowel neutralization, draka. Okay, now that works, but we have we're palatalizing urkeus, which is not correct. So it looks like palatalization has to come after vowel loss, but then that that epithesizes for the cn. Yeah. Okay. No, we're just gonna back out of all of this back out of all of this. Looks like I've run out of um, run out of undos. Never, never fun. Oh dear, I think I've, I've messed something up. Well, perhaps it's time for us to wrap up soon anyway. Let me just... Uh, um, get this back in here. And good, we're good. We're going to have to fix this CN. Because we seem to have come up with a paradox. We can't come up with a word order that gets it right with everything else. So... Um, Friends, this has been a joy. We almost finished, sort of, <laughs> but we're, we're quite a, a ways along. Um, I'm going to come back to the full screen webcam and and uh, bid farewell to our friends with uh, uh, over on YouTube. If you are um, watching this and you'd like to join in with all the, the conversation, uh, come join us in our Discord. The link is in the description, uh, full of uh, very friendly and lovely people. So uh, you will be warmly welcomed. Uh, but that's all for me for today. So thanks again, and we'll see you next time, YouTube.
<sighs> okay. All right. So that is that, friends. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, yeah, hard work, hard work, but uh, I think we, we pulled it off well. Hopefully, I know I learned quite a lot about Lexergy doing this. Um, I hope you did as well. Uh, although some of you I know know a lot more than me um, and, and, and did a great job of teaching all of us. So thank you so much again for joining us. This has been a great deal of fun. And uh, we, will, uh, we will see you in the Discord, um, in the YouTube comments, uh, wherever uh, goofy linguistic content uh, is played.